Hi everybody, welcome to episode 2 of Dizzy Fixed It. Today, we've got ourselves a Honda Harmony 1011 Hydrostatic Lawnmower. Picked this bad boy up for $40, two Andrew Jacksons, baby. And we have a no start issue. What it does is you turn the key and all it does is click. So, we gotta figure out what's going on. So let's get into it. Once again, we're joined by my favorite sidekick here, best kitty, Felix the Honda Cat. That's a good cat, huh, buddy? Come on, buddy. I'm a good kitty, huh? Yeah. Look at this guy. Freaking adorable, right? <laughs> Don't I know it. So when we hop on our mower, hit the brake, make sure she's in neutral, and turn the key, just as we would if we were going to start the mower and mow the daggone grass. This is what we get. Alright, before I do something up, you guys get the idea. It just freaking clicks, okay? So it don't start. So, there is one big downfall to troubleshooting this sum of gum. And I'm going to show you what that is. So the first thing we think of when we hear a noise like that is we check to see if it's a dead battery. Lift up the seat here. Well, it's not breathing. So maybe some CPR. One, two, three. One, two, three. I don't think that's gonna work. <laughs> Anyhow, in all seriousness, Bolt meter. So we just gotta turn this here to uh, to uh, revive, and we should be able to give it 10,000 volts to, re to restart the heart, right? We'll just, we'll just restart the heart with this, you know. Rub it and oh, I almost got it mixed up. Can't be doing that. Then I'll be, I'll be walking backwards. And one. That wasn't it. Nope. And two. Nope. Third time's a charm, right? And... Oh, well, it sure did make me jump, but, uh... It doesn't look like it's breathing. Uh... So, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do now. Well, we can see something happen, because when I take these two leads right here and turn this here voltmeter on to what it should be to read the volts, which is the 20, because it's 12 volt battery, so I'm gonna go one step up. So put it on the 20 volts here, take these two terminals, Put it on the positive and the negative. And you can see that we are reading 12.44 volts, which should be plenty enough to turn over that battery. Or turn over that starter. So that's not it. Now, back to what I was saying about why these things are such a pain to troubleshoot. is because, now that we know that the battery is good, we have to take out the battery. And everything that we need to check from further on is all the way tucked up under this here shroud. All the way up. Under there is one lead to the starter motor. See, I already tried to take this off. It didn't work so well. And then come over here, and we'll be able to see down in there. See that exposed terminal, and then that other cover right there next to that one. Yep, that's the solenoid there that we need to check. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's under this whole shroud, so we gotta take that off. So that involves removing the seat, gas cap, and steering wheel, and some lever heads. Probably not that one, but definitely that, and the key switch, and that head too. And we'll have to take off this, and we will have to... I'm sure that under this pile, of, no, under this, no, under some debris some hey, under some debris somewhere, there's a couple screws we can remove, pop this sucker off of here, so hopefully it won't be too bad, 
Let's do it. I took the spark plug out to make sure that the motor could turn over easily without much resistance and to make sure that it wasn't seized up because that would have definitely been a reason why it wasn't turning over if the motor was seized up, which it's not. It does turn over freely, which I will show you here in a second. Battery removal, 11 millimeter or 7 sixteenths. All right, so first, come over here, we'll bust the key switch loose. We'll take the key out. Channel locks, Lucy, lefty Lucy. And then this is a Phillips screw. Pop this off here. Looks like there was none on the back side. Always put your things together so you don't lose them. Some leaves for you. A party! Woo! -hoo. Let's have a party! The grass party! Yay! Alright, sorry. Sorry about that. I'm going crazy. I should just. Whoa! Pop right off of there. Goodness. And then this one should just twist off, I believe. Unless there's something hiding up under this cap. Nope. Clean and clear. Captain? The coast is clear. <laughs> well, it's one way to get it back in. <laughs> Got it. Oh, yeah, it was just stuck. Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. oh, wow. That's tight. Oh, need some lube. Pops off of there. Yeah, it's just a slide on. No threads. But man, that thing, definitely a pain. All right, that's free. And while we're here, I see. Seat cotter pin right here. Let's go ahead. Oh, that's down. Boom. Now we should be able to get this out of the way and pull our seat bolt right out. Seat. Now for a steering wheel, we have to remove that bolt right there, which is a Phillips head, number two likely. Sixteenths ratcheting wrench. I'll link in the description as well. Good golly, it's tight. I guess it would be. You wouldn't want your steering wheel falling off, right? Like, well, nightmare that would be. Then you're gonna be able to see you running over your neighbor's fence, and then you'd be mowing the fence, and then your neighbor's yard, and unless she's paying it, you don't want to be doing that either. You always want to start your nut, loosening your nut with your ratcheting wrench 
on the open end so you don't strip out your ratchets. I don't care how expensive or how cheap your ratcheting wrenches are, they will go a long way and much longer no matter what brand they are. Or cheap Harbor Freight, expensive Snap-on, mid-range Craftsman, or whatever, Cobalt, whatever have you. Always break your nut loose with your open end and never your ratchet side. I was taught that when I was younger because you'll strip out your ratchets. I've learned it the hard way too. Like, oh, you know, it'll be fine. It's an expensive ratchet. Or it's an expensive ratcheting wrench. It'll hold up, no problem. Well, stripped. Can't use it no more. I gotta go buy another one. So, break them on with the open end. And then, flip it over. Use your ratcheting side. And then, when in unison with the dope ratcheting screwdriver, like I'd said, I'll make it in the description. Go great. Go twice as fast, right? Look at the speed on that. Look at that. It's not sped up, baby. That's real time. like that could have won races baby. <laughs> naturally because it's on a Honda you know what I'm saying Honda are so good That's some gum still don't want to come out there though the trusty pliers hammers here let's give it a little coaxing is what I like to call it not a beating just a little coaxing you know what I mean it's a little bit of coaxing Take my trusty pliers. See, this is where the pliers come in handy, right? Right. So you can't disregard the pliers. You still need them. Yank this puppy out. Pull meter down. Pull meter down. <laughs> Yikes. And then there you go. You can take it with you, just like the race car drivers do. So that way nobody steals your lawnmower. <laughs> How great. Got it. Just put it in your pocket or hang it from your necklace or something. Be like Flavor Flav. You know what I'm saying? Flavor Flav. Put my steering wheel hang from my neck. Right. Watch. I'm gonna make a necklace. You bet. Under the steering wheel, I forgot to mention, there's these two screws here that I think under all that crud, yeah, help hold down the plastic some, so I'm going to go ahead and take those out. Check it out, my rope's so big, baby, you can play tug of war with it, son, you know what I'm saying? Y'all think I wouldn't do the necklace, huh? I told you I would. Check the rope, man. Steering wheel necklace like Flavor Flav, except it's a steering wheel, not a clock, son. That's hard. Rope so big, we can play tug of war with it. Shout out Chip the Ripper, baby. That's his line. Well, it's cool if y'all didn't like my rope, because check my chain in. Check my chain in. I just stepped on the voltmeter, but check my chain instead of the rope. You can't mess with me. Steering wheel necklace. Like Flavor Flav, except it's a steering wheel, not a clock, you dig? Check the chain, not the rope, because y'all didn't like the rope. You might have liked the rope, but I don't know. Look at this, custom links. Custom links, baby. You see this? You see this? Look at this. It's custom links, son. That's hard. Rust on the neck, baby, for y'all? You know what I'm saying? I had this glove, but it didn't work, because now I moved it. What's going on here? Uh, check the chain, man. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take these two Phillips heads out of the body of the footrest there. Oh, no, no. No, not that one. That's the one. Bam. Amash. Amish. It's in there. Hammer. Well, would you look at that? A nut. Right there. Son of a gun. 
Okay. Hey, with my confetti, did you guys see that? Yay! Oh, so much fun! Like a party! Woo! Little parties! Grass parties and acorns! <laughs> Anyway, so we're gonna remove this bolt right here, which is for the brake top piece, which is a 12 millimeter. All right, you go figure the camera shut off as I was wiggling that uh, yellow handle off of there, but that's what was holding this up. And I also took this handle off of the deck raise and lower arm. And that was just held on by this with the cotter pin through it. So that was easy to pop off there. And this which looks like naked. Pretty freaking ugly, huh? Looks like some Mises nests have been up in here. A couple Mises. Up front there. Take the gander. And some Mises up in there. Look at that. Definitely signs of Mises. All kinds of cruddy. But look, we can get to everything now. There's the solenoid I was talking about. So I'm going right there, and I don't have to fight around anything to get to the starter. Um, I went ahead and I took the, these bolts out already. Like I said, I was messing with it. So, ooh, as I rip out the freaking, almost ripped out the spark plug wire. I'm slide that out of there. Like yeah, boom. Okay. Ah! Look at that muscle girl up in there, it's like a brown recluse. It is, too. Yikes, those suckers are poisonous. So he's gonna die. So I got the stuff. Great house and garden. Go and get him. So Yep. That's what you get for being reclusive and brown. You deadly some bitch. Oh look, you don't care. Okay. Now what? It's a dead most looking now. D E Ed Dead. Yeah. Alright, so where were we? So we can see the motor's not seized up, right? Great sign. And then... There's our solenoid. Bam, which we'll be testing. But... I'm afraid it might be our starter here. Look, it's got all kinds of in there. Bunch of nunch. Whole bunch of nunch. Imagine eating that for lunch. <laughs> Boy, would I have a hunch that there's a bunch of nunch. All right, so now what I've got going on here is I have the battery and a set of jumper cables. Link in the description. And what I'm doing is I'm bypassing the solenoid. I'm just going direct power to the starter to see if the starter is actually, in fact seized up. So, the starter grounds to the housing attached to the motor. So I have my negative cable attached to that, one of the ears on that. And then the other side of the negative on the negative of the battery. And then I have my two positives here. I'm going to connect one side to the positive on the battery. So now we're juiced up. She gives us our 12 volts. And I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to touch it right to that terminal on the starter and it should spin. So let's see what happens.
Okay, well the battery's popping, so that means that there's definitely voltage going through it. Oh yeah, the negative terminal's getting hot. I can see it smoking a little bit. So our starter is in fact seized. Joyous. So I do not have a shop or repair manual for these things, for this thing. So I'm taking a guess, but I think that right there and that right there are the two bolts that mount the starter to the engine case. So I'm going to try and get those out of there without taking off the flywheel. Um, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully I don't have to do all that. You know, I think I can get them off. I can get to them both, but it honestly feels like I might snap them. So unfortunately I'm going to need to take the flywheel off so I can get my impact on there and drive them off of there the right way. Um, after they soak in some PB, because even the impact will just snap them right off. But I don't want to do that. So sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, unfortunately, you can't get to the other bolt that holds the star actual starter motor itself together either. It's a two bolt um, housing system that covers the brush on the inside, the armature and whatever. And the other one's tucked up underneath the lip of the base of the motor. So if I could just get to that, I could just pull the housing apart as is. I wouldn't have to take the, take the uh, actual starter off of the motor. I could just pull apart the housing where it sits. But Go figure, can't do that. So, take the flywheel off these three Phillips head screws, number twos, and then big nut under there and a flywheel puller. So, all right, now take the flywheel off. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this pry bar, stick it underneath the flywheel um, around the starter area. That's where it's supported by the starter bracket, also. You wanna be careful doing this because you'll crack the casting on the uh, engine case. So it's not recommended that you do it this way. If you have a fall puller big enough, usually you can do it, you can do it that way. Um, in this case, there's no other access spot to put a um, screw type flywheel puller. So this is where we're gonna do it. So let's go ahead and put not too much weight, just a little bit of pressure on this. I'm just gonna screw the nut on here until it's flush at the top, which I already did. And let's give this a little whack. Should do it in just one blow. Just like that. I'm removing the coil with the two 10 millimeter bolt. And off this thing it should come. There we go. Ah, more spiders. I don't I don't like the spiders, especially the reclusive ones. Here in Ohio is where I'm is. Wow, talk about some gunk on the freaking pickup wheel. All right, now I've done quite the number on these bolts already with uh, a little bit of roundingness, rounding edginess. So 12 millimeter, half inch, same thing.
and the other. Alright, so we have our starter here, right? Yeah, you know, nasty up in there. You definitely tell we got wet. So no wonder it's seized. So we have to take these two bolts out right here. And I do believe it is five sixteenths or eight millimeter. Yep, it's an eight. Not too bad. Break this one loose. Should have busted this bad boy out a long time ago. Good old trusty Ryobi. I'll link in the description. I have to beat it. Just beat it. Not the recommended tool, but it seems to be working. There she blows. There's the brush assembly. What's that? Pieces. Washer. A couple washers, pieces of a brush probably. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Chunks of plastic looks like. I don't know what the heck would be plastic up in here. And we're off. And now she's a spinning. Awesome. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up a little bit. And uh we'll shove her back in there and see what happens. That's really not too bad. I'm just gonna take some uh steel wool and a little bit of WD and some contact cleaner to finish it off. Not to mention some grease on uh packed inside here up on top right around the edge in there and then probably at the bottom right around there just a little bit then we'll shove it back together all right brushes actually look surprisingly pretty healthy up in there um i'm definitely gonna put some grease in there because that's where that rides in that little nipple all right all right I should say, steel wool did a pretty good job, exponentially better than what it was. Got the grease on the tip there, got the grease in between the pole right there, and got that all WD-40'd up. I don't really know how else to clean that up in there, but I think it'll be okay. It spins really freely, so look at that. Rocking. Cool, so we're gonna roll that. Let's have her back together. <laughs> Give her a nice blow job there. With my mouth. Right. It goes that way. There you go. So we have our battery and our starter here, all completed and repaired. It spins pretty freely. Nice. 
and we're going to do the bench test on the floor. So I'm just going to take my jumper cables here, put it one side up to the positive. Still nothing. Why? Alright y'all, so it's several odd something hours later. Um, and as you can see, there's a starter board back up there, which is a good sign, right? Um, so what had happened was, you see what had happened was, was when I was putting the starter back together after getting it freed up earlier, um, every time that I put the brush, what do I call it, the, uh, the brush plate back on and closing it up all the way, I was... Uh, turning it to get the bolt holes lined up and that was pulling the br one of the brushes out of the uh, spring holder So uh, I was only having one brush to try to power the commutator, which is why I wasn't spinning on the bench test So um, luckily my buddy Travis stopped by and saved the day Gave him a extra hand. He was able to hold the cover up while I had my headlamp on and I uh, took one of these guys little pick deals and just stand dangled in there and pushed the brushes aside and we were able to slide it down over the uh, uh, commutator and bench test it perfectly. Um, also double checked it with the battery that I'm going to be using to make sure that it worked and spun like a top. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything else bolted back up there. As you can see I got the flywheel back on. Not tightened yet because we have to set the air gap for the um, pickup coil or the ignition coil I mean. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Alright, I can't exactly remember where I learned this from. I can't remember if it was Grandpa that taught me this or if I just learned it down the way somewhere working on stuff. But um, for setting an air gap, uh, which is the gap between a um, coil and your magnetic um, generator of sorts, which in this case would be the flywheel, um, they say if you don't have the feeler gauge spec, you can use a um, thin piece of cardboard about the thickness of a playing card or a business card. So we have just that right here. Uh, these bolts are snugged down with this right here. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that out. And boom, our air gap set, just like that. These uh, two bolts here allow the coil to move back and forth to adjust the air gap. So I shove this in there. Push the, push the coil. Uh, against the piece of cardboard, which is against the flywheel. Tighten those bolts down and you just saw me pull it out. So that's all that there is to it. I'm going to go ahead and get this nut back on the flywheel. Uh, torque down with the old, good old German good and tight method. And then throw the rest of it back together and uh, hopefully she'll start and run. Everything goes back together in the reverse order that it was taken from or taken apart in. So as you might be able to tell, I uh, got rid of all the nasty debris that was built up under the uh, plastic cover and on the deck and just everywhere. I blew it off real nice with the leaf blower and the air hose. So no more mouse nests up in here. Um, I'm not going to power wash or anything like that. I just got rid of all the crap that was in here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it in the exact opposite order that I took it apart in. So. Next time you see this thing, it should be back together once you run into something stupid. Alright, back is back in. Moment of truth. Park your brake. Got my hand on. Break, neutral check, deck up, choke on, I guess. Fingers crossed. Here we go. First start, or first try anyway. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on.
Ha! Thumbs up! Two thumbs up! If I had thumbs on my toes, I would put those up too, but I don't. So let's go again. Yeah, baby! Alright. Sweet, guys! On the Harmony Runs! Her like kitten! Man, listen to the sound of this thing. So stoked! Alright! good things that I can call it, but I'll be darned, you know? Good stuff. Runs great. Super stoked. Um, so, thank you for watching another episode of Dizzy D Fixed It. Um, like, share, subscribe. Um, again, I'll link all the equipment and tools that I use in the description. And I'm pretty sure that's it. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day. Now, if you'll excuse me, me and my $40 Honda Harmony mower here, we're a little behind on some leaves, so we got some mowing to do. Peace out, guys. Thanks again for watching. Dizzy D fixed it. Beep beep.